what's the actual um, name of this state then? Is it a papal state just in, in the game, or...? Or does it have a different name? Also, I hope uh, if the VOD gets deleted, or sorry, it gets muted, I hope um, I can still actually like download the VOD. I'm not quite sure how that works. Because the VOD might get muted due to the music. Which is gonna like really fuck with this if I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. Quick word about game rules, yes. Alright, so let's have a look at this. We got the uh, Palatine Guard, or Palatine Guard, the uh, Guardia uh, Palatina, which uh, Guardia Palatina Dionor, I'm not quite sure what it means. I mean, honorary, honorary like palace guards or like Palatina or whatever. We've got a, sh a fleet, Marina Pontif uh, Pontificia or whatever, that's a that's kind of cool. So we got the the pontificate fleet, like the Pont Pontifex Maximus's fleet. Yeah, that's the religious head, I guess. That's a pope's title, I believe. Pontifex Maximus. Let's see if we've got a radio. No, we do not. The pope did not uh, develop his own radio, so uh, like radio technology. Yup, Pope ship. The head ship is the the Roma though, which honestly is not the pride of the fleet, though it should be. We got a bunch of submarines. Some of them are actually like, they're all. Oh my god, they're all named after like, um, oh what were they called? They're all named after like uh, fucking uh, like Diocleses or Dioceses, whatever they're called, like the fucking. The, uh, the mun municipal, like the Christian municipal thing, whatever they're called. A parishes, but something else. Also, the icons, everything's changed now. What the fuck is this? The guy who makes the MPU mod just cannot settle on an aesthetic. He's constantly changing it. A Regina Elena class. Yeah, I'm gonna separate all these guys into different uh, fleets and stuff. Because I think I want to have the old submarines uh, on their own. And the new ones. In another fleet. I like how we've got one super heavy. Like we've got one dreadnought and then just destroyers. That's it. It's probably like the militarized yacht of the Pope. The good thing is we can probably build a fleet exclusively with the intention of uh, like being of it being like a um like a Mediterranean fleet, which is nice. Also, I got got no clue what to call these fleets, so I'll just uh, hold off on naming them yet. Yeah, battle yachts with twelve-inch guns, exactly. Oh, <laughs> one factory, that's good. Um, probably not going to be at war immediately, so I guess I'll just convert one into civilian so we can maybe have two factories. I'm not sure if it's even going to matter at all. Uh, we should probably actually, before we do that, see how many military factories we have. We're one. Okay, let's uh, not do that, because we got to get some guns. Uh, let's see who our generals are. We've got, oh my fucking god, he's wearing literal medieval armor. That is like, that's like, um, uh, yeah, no, I, I did not expect him to be a powerhouse. Uh, that is like a literal, uh, oh, fuck. Also, that's, that's Rudy Giuliani. That's the, uh, like the uh, mayor of New York or whatever. Uh, yeah, he's got a, um, I think it's like a Swiss Guard uniform or whatever it's called. Like the the guys who guard outside the, the Pope. Though I thought they were more colorful and less like heavily clad. Maybe it's something else. 
basically he's an uh, old god which i guess makes sense considering his garb and you got field marshal angelo uh, Cericha, georg von uh, Suri Di uh, Diaspermont, and then we got Re uh, Reginaldo Gi uh, Giuliani. Um, he's probably got the best... Actually, no, this guy has the best uh, traits, I think, for us to use as the leader. And then we've got a field marshal in the guy in the suit here. Angelo Cericha. Yeah, just put fucking... Just, yeah, just put, like, fucking crusader armors on everyone. Just go all in with the, uh, just meme it up. I don't even know what, like, what symbol to use for these guys. It's literally just a single... Single, uh, division. There's no, like, single division icon, though, so... Oh, whoops. That was not my intention there, but nothing really was lost. And these guys will be the... I mean, they're all the Guardia Palatina anyway, so... Or Guardia Palatina, whatever. Uh, yeah, we should build something. Oh my fucking god, it's literally called the Deus Vault class. Kill them and let God sort it out. Yeah, I've, I've heard that one before. I mean, I guess we'll just make Deus Vault class submarines. Yep, God wills it. So yeah, there's the honorary guard, motorized and armored. I mean, we'll just make some of the guard, I guess. Yo, they're so weak. Holy shit. Okay, let's have a look at the foci we can uh, choose here. Oh, there are none, of course. We gotta wait until, I guess, the Pope dies or something. Let's just un uh, unpause and see what happens. Uh, I'm not gonna buy steel, honestly, because then we have no civilian factories. Actually, no, we will have one. No, we will not. We don't need to construct any right now. We just need to get the um, the guns up. The state of the papacy. Okay, let's uh, get, let's get settled in for some reading here. I got a militia here. And artillery and infantry. I want to get infantry in this. I'm actually, I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to have these guys, uh, I think, train. Even though they are, like, fully trained, I want to get some army experience. Actually, fuck it, it's not going to... It's going to be so slow and it's going to waste guns, so... Let's just do this. At the state of the papacy, following the collapse of Italy after the Weltkrieg... A Rome became in danger of capture by the Socialist Republic of Italy, after it refused to recognize the new Italian Federation. The blurry battle lines of the Civil War mostly spared Rome due to the local Austrian garrison, oh, okay. which together with local right-wing militias crushed the uprisings in Rome. The de uh, okay, that's a misspelling there. The debilitated state had no armed forces loyal to it, however, and it had scarce chances at resisting any syndicalist offensive. However, King Ferdinand III of the reborn Kingdom of the Two Sicilies and now leader of the Italian Federation would not stand by while the center of Catholicism fell to syndicalism and led a counteroffensive to secure Rome, bringing the papal state under Sicilian protection. Receiving significant support from the Austrian occupation garrisons and a, f and a few foreign volunteers, uh, the reborn Zouave Corps. After the war ended, the Papal State controlled only a small fraction of its nominal territory, and is in most respects a rump puppet state. However, it's recognized as an independent state by the majority of the nations in the world. In the sphere of uh, Curia politics, 
the fading health of Pius. Oh, I should probably turn up the music a little bit. Uh, the failing health of Pius is in everyone's minds, and it reminds or remains to be seen who will succeed him should he pass in the coming years. Which, of course, he will. Yeah, I've seen the uh, like the different permutations here. I mean, this is the mega meme one, I think. National Spirit Holy War. So this is the uh, social democrat. This is the social liberal, and this is the. Uh, Paternal Autocrat, and this is the National Populist, I think. That's, uh... Anti that's th those are three arrows. That's in that's a German anti-fascist uh, symbol, I believe. Also, what the fuck? Notless Charter. Yep, we know about that one. Mussolini and them boys. Legionary spirit. Edward the Eighth crowned as king of Britain after George's death, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, this is weird. You've got a Roman army based on the principles of. The legacy of the Roman legions or some shit? Revive the legendary discipline and make the legions of Rome internationally renowned once again. What the fuck? So, are those, uh... Are those, like, dependent on anything? No, they... I don't think they are. Oh, you need to, uh, relinquish, uh, the Pope's temporal power for this to happen. And this is reforming the temporal power, which gives you more Palatine God, crusade against syndicalism, kill them all and let God sort uh, sort them out. This one seems really funny, though. The Kingdom of Rome. I kind of want to do that one, but... Um, and then save maybe this for YouTube, I'm not sure. Because this seems like, uh, this is the democratic stuff. Temporal power uh, over the papal state and its claimed territories offered uh, to us by the donation of Pepin and stolen by the Piedmontese in 1860 shall continue to enforce this the, and to quell dissent. Uh, ultramontane groups have proposed that we sh uh, shall establish the temporal power of the Pope as dogma divinely revealed by God himself. Oh, this one, this is exclusive to democratic Rome. In that case, this is the funny one, and this is the one I'm going to go with. Uh, Quadragesimo Quinto Anno. Latin for the 44, uh, f uh, 45th year is a new encyclical written by Pope Pius the 9th, uh, 7th, 8th, uh, that's 10 and I, so that's a 9, that discusses the uh, ethical implications, or it's 11, uh, implications of the social and economic order. 45 years after Leo... The 13th, so that would be 11 then. R rerum, uh, or rerum Novarum uh, Encyclical. So basically... Freedom and dignity arising from unrestrained capitalism and syndicalism, calling for the reconstruction of the social order based on the principle of solidarity and subsidiarity. So it's like a, uh, it's like a third way kind of um, idea. The family has an innate right to the development, but this is only possible within the framework of the functioning economy and sound enterprises. For this, Pope Pius concludes that solidarity, not conflict, is a necessary condition. The Pope therefore demands more solidarity, especially between employers and employees, through new forms of cooperation and communication among Catholic citizens. A new era of Catholic corporatism is just beginning. So corporativism in this um, 
you know, historically, was a thing very, very much uh, associated with Mussolini in this period. So it is oddly, not necessarily appropriate, but interesting that, you know, Italy would still go that, down that path. Uh, let's pick our specialist here. Research speed is always what we want. Doesn't really matter who I go with, so I'm just gonna pick top left one. He's got a cool beard. Eugene Tisserant. Don't remember or like don't recognize any of these guys. Then again, my uh, Italian history is not really up uh, up to snuff. Anglo Afghani War, as usual. Uh, yeah, could you clarify again, um, Bobbit, if you're still here? What? So is this stuff exclusive to democ uh, democratic Rome? Mein Gott, Black Monday has struck and there's an electoral gridlock in France. Who would have thought? Yeah, is, this stuff is exclusive to democratic Rome. With the legionaries and all that weird stuff. Okay. Black Monday hits the Papal State. Almost two weeks ago, the Berlin... Yep, that we've seen that. This is the normal event, and then we see... Let's hope the government will save us from the worst. You can see the socialist troops standing on the border here. Under Palmiro Togliatti. Trying to see if there's a lot of like March of the XX uh, or X uh, regiment. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, sort of Danish. Yeah, there's no uh, Papal State music pack. It seems it's not queued into the. Um, uh, it's not queued into. Oh fucking hell, Father Charles Colin. Uh, three years ago today, Father Charles Colin uh, started doing a weekly radio broadcast in America, and, uh, and more than 50 million people turned on the radios and listened. He is a raving anti-Semite, claiming that the syndicalist revolution in France was fermented by the Jew, and that the Berlin stock market crash is an, is an international conspiracy of Jewish bankers, and somehow people still tune in. His hate speech will not be tolerated by the Church, and the Pope is expected to make a decision whether to ask the United States government to shut down his broadcast, so his hateful message cannot reach the public. I mean, yeah, ask the President of the United States to shut down this radio priest. Or we can not denounce and the US gets upset with us, we gain base stability, but it's only four, so I'm gonna do it. Let's have a look at the various popes and see which one we prefer. Syndicalists take over Australasia. Okay. What? The death of Pius the Ninth. Or eleventh. I'm stupid. Something which rapidly worsened. So he. Uh, Pius died following a heart attack after having been in declining health for the past several years, which rapidly worsened following Black Monday. And now they will be ruled by the College of Cardinals, and a papal conclave has been uh, convened. Now I'm... Yes, it is uh, 11. Thank you. I am just being stupid. Now, this has happened to me before. John Curtin, of, uh, of the syndicalists here, has taken over Australasia. And now they have the Australasian Union. <clears throat> Excuse me. These radicals are loyal to the Australasian Council of Trade Unions, the ACTU, being the most prominent syndicalist faction in the uh, antipod, uh, antipod, Antipodes? Antipodes? I'm not sure. Uh, in hiding since the Melbourne Common Uprising of 1924. And the subsequent suppression of unions by Gen uh, Governor General William Bodewood's government. Yeah, that's the guy who was before, before he was now ousted. How alarming. That's the world's focus there, so let's call the Papal Conclave. Now, yeah, we gotta, uh, like, have a look here. Also, I can't pan for some reason. There we go. We gotta have a look here and figure out which one we prefer. So we're gonna go with the Democratic one, so it's gotta be the t two far-left ones here. We can go with Christian Trade Unions. And 
Destro Incentive. Sounds good. Welfare Program. Sounds good as well. Though, it, you know, it does impact consumer goods. Helping those in need. Also good. Less good, though, than Welfare Programs, I think. Though it, they do grant monthly population, apparently. And help displaced families. Aid for refugees. Also monthly population. That's good. A call for the people. Recruitable population factor and war support and reinforce rate. So this one is really good. I think in terms of war, this is the best one. Might go with Steven uh, the uh, Steven the tenth. Uh, Elia Dalla Costa is a man most favored by the people due to his charitable nature. However, he is not a man uh, over overly interested in politics, and his election will most likely result in the papacy giving away to the rule of the people. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with Stephen the Tenth then, because uh, that's the one that leads to the uh, the rule of the people then, which I guess creates or actually, yeah, Elia de la Costa. That's the one we want to go for, right? Or El wait, Elia or yeah, Elia de la Costa, the de la Costa, or whatever. Let us pray they chose vi or choose wisely. Wisely. Oh my God, I'm going like full German. I've been watching Dark on Netflix and also. Uh, using Duolingo at the, uh, at the same time to brush up on my German. The First International Congress. Delegates from socialist nations and political movements around the world gathered in Paris today for the latest in a series of world congresses. While the mantle of the Third International was taken up by the communards of the Russian Civil War, the ideological tenor of the event promises to be very different, with syndicalist parties being the newly dominant force to the far left. Uh, delegates were greeted by a military parade and exhibition of avant-garde art, Avant God, Arch, and finally a speech by the chairman of the CSP. Yes, thank you. Electronic mechanical engineering is done, so we can go further down the research stuff. Mechanical computing always, you know, the path that I take when I do this kind of stuff. an interesting uh, model on the Italian here. I do like how uh, pretty much all of the uh, nations have kind of unique models. So, oh, the bet has joined the Great Carnet, okay. Uh, the... Of Ottawa, that's done. The Holy See has finally come together to deliberate the election of a new Pope following Pius IX's death. In the end, they chose Elia Cardinal Dalla Costa as Stephen, or Stephen, Stephen, the tenth. Who's leader of the uh, Authoritarian Democrat Party? Yeah, that one is the one I want, right? I know that's the one you mentioned, but uh, that's the one I want in order to actually get, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna fuck our stability, but that's fine. Bypassed. Let's start helping those in need. Also, at some point, I will have to uh, possibly go away for a bit. Um, I'll let you know if that happens, and I'll just go to the BRB screen. Uh, and also, I cannot stream for too much longer. I'll stream for like half an hour more, I think, and then I'll try to cut up this uh, VOD, if I can, into the uh, Three Kingdoms part and the uh, Hearts of Iron 4 part. The poor of our country need to be fed, just as our Lord commands us to do. The new system of charity will make use of popular donations, allowing the government to invest its resources elsewhere.
Yeah, the, uh... The Papal State doesn't have uh, as, uh, or the Papal State under Stephen, 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 I don't know, uh, doesn't have that, you know, catchy of a, um, of a slogan, you know, they, they don't have the, the, uh, the break, the chains and all that, of the syndicalists. Feed the poor and clothe the hungry, yeah. Maneuvers in the Carpathians, so once again, oh, Ching declared war on Changxing, Zhang Guo. Okay. Um, I'm actually I'm looking forward to the mod click in the uh, new mod, like the Muslim um, Muslim uh, Chinese peoples. But yeah, once again, maneuvers in the Carpathians, the uh, Romanians, and what not uh, what not are kind of being a bit angsty there. Yes, uh, this does mean that uh, tithes are taxes. I'm guessing, like, it's kind of framed in that way anyways. Who the tithes I am? So, we've got... Yep, the person whose name I will not try to pronounce. I'm guessing there would be some sort of, like, tithe system, honestly. Um... If we go, like, really hard on the, uh... You know, medievalist, like, Christian stuff. Though, so I'm guessing the donation thing there might actually be the tithe, and then it's, uh, it's like, factored into your ta taxes as, like, a part of your tax, and it goes directly to charity or something, maybe. So, we can focus on ecclesiastical matters, or we can help the displaced families. Uh, that gives us monthly population and research speed, which will then stack up. So I'm going to do that first. And yes, everything in uh, version 0.10 is looking very, very good. I'm really looking forward to guys right here, version 0.10. Still got no clue when it's going to drop. I was, like, extremely scared that it was going to drop while I was... Uh... Oh, Manuel Carles assumes full control of Argentina. Once again, seen that before. Will this stabilize Argentina? No, it won't. It's just going to... It's going to launch them into a war across the entire continent. Union Syndicalista achieves Italian majority. So that is the... Okay, that's Alcesta de Ambres. We've seen him before. Uh... Ended with the Union's uh, syndicalists are led by Palmiro Togliatti, continue its man. Wait. Excuse me? So, they continued their rule, but Palmiro Togliatti resigned, or he might have died. I'm not quite sure what happens there. Uh, they could do that with uh, the taxes, like, they could stop taking tithes during mass and just rename taxes and forms as tithes. I think they probably might do that, because, like, it is a, you know, there is no separation of state and church here, so, uh, you straight up might, might not even have to go to, um, to mass. Yeah, gotta file your small business tithes. You write off, uh, some expenses of your tithes. I'm gonna get the uh, industrial research speed for, because we're uh, researching a bunch of that right now. Oh, what the f- I've never seen this before, hold on. Yo! So, the Kingdom of Siam and then the Siamese Federation. Authoritarian Democrat, but they've got like a red star and everything and um, like some wreaths. Which, the Boer Boeradet Rebellion. The recent Siamese re revolution, while outwardly successful, has seen its popularity plummet. Taking advantage of the controversial Yellow Cover Dossier, the nickname for a proposed plan to overhaul the nation's economic systems and nationalize many industries, a red scare was whipped up. While well, the chief of the army, Luang, um, the thing I cannot say, declared himself loyal to Parliament, uh, Prince Boeradet, 
organized an armed mutiny in the northern reaches of the country, proclaiming himself and his subordinates the Kana Guban Gumusang National Reclamation Party. He began a march towards Bangkok. The swift mobilization of government and forces uh, led to a two-day standoff that eventually escalated to an all-out war between both sides. Yeah, I've just never seen it before. It's uh, it's interesting. So that seems kind of like Mao-esque. Mexico declared war on Yucatan and Poland uh, elects a new king. Which king is it? Uh, Olbrecht of uh, Habsburg Lothringen. An, so an Austrian king. Um, so that didn't last long. <laughs> Shocking news from Australia, uh, the Australasian uh, Confederation as the Australasian God, Australsian, that's probably a um, little uh, typo there, a group of right-wing authoritarians who have long criticized the Australasian government for not going far enough in its suppression of syndicalism and who lost in the recent electoral bid by f uh, a fair margin have seized control of the government led by Field Marshal Thomas Blamey. The new government immediately prom promised that the Australasian Confederation, uh, oh my God, Confederation would do whatever it took to stamp out syndicalism within Australasia. I mean, they were just syndicalist and now a military coup has had them collapse that that's interesting also this song is an absolute banger uh rubu malandro absolutely no idea what the culture is oh and also now we got the vietnam war again the german colony uh like the locals have rebelled in the german colony led by an I think it's Wen Anin, um, who... Oh my fucking god, there's just revolutions and civil wars everywhere. So the Soviets have also risen up, under Nikolai Bukharin, against uh, the Senate, Emperor Palpatine, the second Russian civil war. So we've got... A, a syndicalist, like a far-left socialist rebellion in Vietnam, in Russia, and we had one in, in um, like, a takeover in Australasia, but then that got, like, stamped out by a, um, a counter-revolution, I guess. Let us do... Not actually called to the people because we don't need it right now. I'll do the uh, ecclesiast ecclesiastical matters. We need to produce support equipment that is correct. Though with what military factories? Maybe I you know, should play Australasia sometime. Yabal Shamar declared war on Nejd. Or however you pronounce that. So you've got the Arab wars here. All right, I gotta go uh, for a brief moment, and I'll be back in just like two minutes, I think. Be right back.
Uh, hello, I'm back. Also, that's no problem, Bobich. Uh, you gotta, like, you go look after your cat. What time is it actually where, like, in your time zone right now? It's gotta be like, um, if I'm thinking, like, seven maybe? No, that's completely wrong. No, it's gotta be like uh, five or six, five, four o'clock. I don't know. If you're East Coast. Which I think you were. I might be misremembering. But yeah, anyways. You do what you gotta do, dude. As I said before, I'm gonna try to get this stuff out on YouTube. I like the VOD. 4.45, dude, I was so close. I just had to count myself backwards for a while and then... And then it worked out. It's kind of easy to remember because I release videos for the EST schedule, kind of. So I release them at 7 here, which is like 1 p.m. in um, on the East Coast or whatever. Yeah, dude. Uh, do what you gotta do. The stream's only gonna go for like 15 more minutes, I think. Uh, at which point I gotta head off as well, because it's like 11 and man's got stuff to do. Like cleaning up and stuff. Basically, do all the stuff I procrastinated uh, doing uh, during the weekend. Because I've been either out of the house or, um, you know, I've decided to go out of the house so that I don't have to do the things. Or I've just been not in a very good shape to do a lot of things because I've engaged in the national pastime. Emperor of Japan declared war on Transamur. Uh, that... Hold on. Yeah, we don't need any, like, marines or anything like that. Uh, we've got... But we had, um... Support companies here. Yeah, we've got a recon company. We don't have the recon research. That is weird. We might not even need it then, but I'm gonna research it anyways. And we probably actually want to have fighters. I don't know why we've got CAS and no fighters. So Transamur is, okay, so it's uh, Alexander Kolchak, for some reason. So I don't think it's actually all that un, um, unusual to see Japan invade Transamur. Like the uh, territory occupied by Alexander Kolchak and his military junta, I think. I think. Tried to claim himself supreme ruler of Russia, yeah, there you go. Also, this song is also a banger. The uh, Kaiser X soundtrack has some really good songs. Okay, we're done. Focus on ecclesiastical matters. Now we can go for relinquish uh, temporal power, which removes the national spirit of the Holy See. Uh, and we'll unlock some other stuff. Sure, yeah, let's do that. And Jack Reed is elected president of the United States of America. Let's see what this jumped up journalist can do. Yes, so he is the leader of the Socialist Party of America. So now the Socialist Party of America is in charge in America, which is fucking weird. Oh, and he got a new face. Yeah, he did. I, sh I should have updated my thumbnail for that. Oh, well. Or at least, I don't know. He's got a different face in some of the stuff, I think. I used uh, the face that was in the game when I was playing him uh, for my thumbnail. I should probably just update the thumbnail, but then I gotta re-upload all the thumbnails. Actually, no, I can change them for, from now on, I guess. And Norway has joined the International. Fucking Martin Tralmal. No. It's not even Martin Tralmal, it's just Abedeportia, the uh, Labour Party. Uh, 
We still have the king, but he's probably going to be uh, forced to abdicate. Which is going to lead to, um, I think, Martin Tralmal. Famous Norwegian socialist. Yeah, <laughs> you're a Cindy. You're a Cindy. You're all Cindy's. So that's interesting, though, that, uh, yeah, they've gone down. Yeah, work is victory. So it's interesting also, though, that the king still has not been deposed. Since it's the uh, Arbeide Partia. But Gustav V in Sweden, but they haven't, like, it's a coalition of the like-minded. They've gone... They, they've got, like, reasonably moderate, yeah. Nothing insane there, at least as of yet. Uh, Tom Mann is the leader of the Union of Britain. Uh, first General Secretary of the Trade Union Congress. Yeah, I've seen this guy before as well. Takes over following the electoral gridlock. Benoit Fachon. Of course, Kaiser Wilhelm II. Wouldn't have it any other way. Sorry, I bumped the uh, desk a little bit there. How long until we can get into the uh, really fun stuff, the really juicy stuff? Oh, cool. New flag. Uh, so... That unlocks stuff in the other, other parts of the tree, so do I gotta go for the people's rule to get the new flag then? Opposed to the establishment of democracy in Rome, if we are to promote a stable system in the long term, we must seek to promote the new government and relinquish the temporal power within the church and clergy. Yeah, that's the one. Yes, let's go for the new flag. And then afterwards, we'll do the Senate and the Kingdom of Rome. Call for general elections, organize the civilian government, and then we'll fix, you know, fix the country. And then start this meme, you know, hellscape here, down here, with the legionary spirit. Establish, oh, I mean, at least now I know what I'm gonna call the armies. They're gonna be called the legions, of course. The legions of Rome. Royalist victory in Siam, so... Yeah, Kingdom of Siam rules then, still. Exactly, the Holy Roman Legions. Not at all to be confused with the, you know, armies of the Holy Roman Empire. You know, the, uh... You've got the Roman army ex uh, in Rome, and you've got the Roman army in the Holy Roman Empire, and then you've got the Roman army in, you know, the... The Rome of the East, and then you got the Roman army in the Third Rome in Russia, and so on and so forth. Fucking everybody's Rome. Uh, 
let's go so for doctrine i'm not quite sure i probably superior firepower just because we have no land power yeah they're not holy not roman holy roman empire is that a monty python skit i think it is sounds like it Republic declared in Serbia. Democracy in the Balk Balkans. That's new. Interesting. And there's a stand-up in America that's going to lead to some, you know, very not good stuff. Oh, dude, I'm starting to get tired. I, um, I don't know how long I slept last night, but it wasn't that long, because I was like, oh my god. Yeah, here we go. Miriam, Douglas MacArthur, Huey Long, and Jack Reed. Yeah, I, um, I think I, like, I was home quite late last night, um, and then I went to bed, and then I woke up, like, shortly thereafter and couldn't go to bed again. Uh, so instead I went on like a two hour bike ride uh, Cause you know, you gotta you Gotta stay active every day and uh, Yes, I do need some sleep and then Now I'm like Kind of starting to feel it Let's do the Senate of the Kingdom of Rome We will establish the or we can bring that the Senatus Romanus for the first time in centuries with effective power to make sure the people's voice is heard. Yes, of course, the uh, famous uh, Roman Senate, uh, you know, famously known for being such a good place for the people to be heard. In fact, you needed to be like 60 years old and have like a long career as a... Um, at, oh, yep, yeah, here we go, the Second American Civil War. We had to be like... Six years old and have a long career as a Roman politician to even be fucking allowed in there. Syndicalists. Populists. Oh, it's Hiram Johnson. And then Douglas MacArthur. And Panama has joined the intent Entente. Um, yeah, I tried to go to bed, like, at a reasonable hour, but I'm a student and I don't work, so... Generally, I can choose my own hours, and that leads to me often skewing a little bit towards uh, American hours, basically. Because uh, a lot of people I watch uh, on Twitch and on YouTube and stuff like that, they sort of operate on, on, on that sort of schedule. Um, the United States taught them well. Cool, the Philippines. That's kind of insulting. But yeah, the Philippines have uh, gone democratic. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing, uh, Doc. Slightly. Uh, I'm... I mean, I'm, I'm establishing the Senate right now from, you know, the Roman Empire uh, and Republican times. Uh, but yeah, so... I try to go to bed, like, at a reasonable hour, but I... Last night, I went out with some friends, and you know how that goes. So... I ended up being at home way late. Way later than I should have been. But yeah, we are like we are trying to establish the Roman Senate. Second International, the first uh, syndicalist international held in Paris. Oh okay, yeah, that's the that stuff. The fall of Washington. The syndicate militias have advanced towards and captured the symbolic capital of the United States, Washington D.C. Yeah, that might fall. Um, 
to the people in Baltimore, or it might still stay stay there. It might still have, like they probably have troops in Delaware because Delaware is always like hell to take. Oh yeah, it is a yeah, it is a Roman constitutional monarchy this time around. And I mean, yes, I did, I did get very, very wasted. But that is what Norwegians do. Is that's a like it's a reason I call it a, you know, the national pastime binge uh, binge drinking. Peace deal between the Germany Station and the Indo Chinese uh, Union because. Yeah, uh, the Indo Chinese Union took over, which means they peace out automatically. And we have the Spanish Civil War. Guys, Reich loves its civil wars. Devastating blow for colonialism. Yes, the Vietnamese or the Viet Minh have. Thrown off the colonial yoke. Colonists Spain declared war on the Kingdom of Spain. That's interesting. They've got a small pocket of Carlist troops there who are gonna get completely slaughtered. Oh my god, what the fuck? I've never seen this before. It's a fucking putsch, dude. In a shocking turn of events, General uh, Isaac Reinders of the Dutch Armed Forces declared a state of emergency and launched a coup in the Hague. Deposing the recently elected left-wing government, conservative military figures and nationalists have long watched with dismay as a fragile centrism typical of Dutch politics uh, typified by the... Oh, let's try to pronounce this one. Uh, um, um, Amtenaren Verbord, Amtenaren Verbord, a ban on civil servants joining political organizations has fallen apart. Some foreign observers have seen the hand of the Kaiser in Reinders' uh, bold actions, and though no evidence has yet come to light, a leftist Dutch government would not have been in the Reich's interests. The military has set up a junta to administer the Netherlands and block a syndicalist res uh, resurgence. It is unclear whether the elections will be held anytime soon. Dutch democracy may be at an end, so they are now authoritarian democrat under a military junta. Rolling on the streets. Civil servant ban. That's really interesting, honestly. That's how you end up like with the Dutch land or whatever I had, I think, in the Norway campaign. Let's go for the first Roman elections in the Roman Senate. Fall of Madrid. Taken by the, uh, the Carlists. And yeah, that's, uh, that's true actually, like, fucking everyone has a navy in uh, Kaiserreich. Middle Africa declared war on Portugal, the fucking Bush War, or whatever it's called. Taking over Angola. Uh, that's also one of those uh, wars where if uh, they take the territory from Portugal, the war sort of just ends. Japan announces her ambitions, uh, though the situation... Okay, so Japan has done the Rising... or the Empire of the Rising Sun. Um, or sorry, the Rising Sun folk tree, which means that they can now do, like, foreign policy. Which in Kreisreich or Harsh von Four means they can wage war. They've also gone down the National Security Act and done the Longest Day, which brings them to the Showa Restoration, which is kind of what was happening. Uh, or you, you, that's a callback to the Major Restoration, where the Emperor took more power again. The Showa Emperor, of course, is the Emperor that was in under World War Two. Mister, uh, what's his face? I forget his name. Uh, Hidek, no, fucking Hirohito, not Hideki Tojo. Hideki Tojo was a general. Uh, the United Baltic Duchy declared war on- oh my god. The Baltic War. Dude, it's fucking popping off here. This is like the- this is the Civil War timeline. For many years, the United Baltic Duchy- uh, Baltic Duchy set up by the Germans after the conquest of the Roman- or sorry, Roman, what the fuck? Former Russian governorates uh, during the Veldkrieg has marginalized its native Estonian and Latvian populace, though the local population has been ruled by local German elites for centuries within the- uh, with the imposition of German- Ducal structure under Duke Friedrich, uh, and policies policies that both favor German settlers and undermine the natives. Open rebellion has broken out. That's wild, dude. Let's get a radar tower so we can, like, fight better. 
uh, if we got a fight in the air above uh, our fair country here, our fair tiny country. Also, happy belated Canada Day. Oh yeah, we should totally do uh, early mobilization. Maybe get some of this... Uh, we can probably cut down on the guns. You know what, I'll try to do... Um, oh, you can't even do that. Yeah, I gotta like, end it. I don't wanna do that though, cause then we waste all the production efficiency. Yeah, fight more gooder. I think we want defense, honestly. Because we probably won't be on the offense for the most part. And... <laughs> the eyes of God, yeah. Sending out, like, Christian God waves uh, to detect enemy aircraft. Yeah, the, um... Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we, we should probably be focusing on defense, spe uh, specifically because we don't have a large enough army to really do any cool offensives, I think. So we will probably be holding a bunch of lines, and because of that, the defense uh, percentage stat will be useful, I think. We're actually getting, yeah, we're getting uh, army experience from our advisor, which is good. The Turks on Khan declared war on the Alash Order. Oh, dude, yeah, my, like, I'm not at all convinced uh, that I'm going to be able to do any of this. That's also part of why it's fun, uh, just to try shit that's, like, insane and weird. Saudi Arabia has joined the Cairo Pact. It's because, like, if you've uh, watched uh, any of the Norway video series I've done, I'm, you know, f playing a nation with a population of, like, 3 million at a time. And I've inflicted something like fucking 20 million losses on the enemies. Or even more. Maybe, like, 30 million, uh, collectively. Uh, that's probably uh, pushing it. Probably 20 million. Uh, the first Roman elections. With the Pope relinquishing his temporal power and the transition from papal rule to democracy underway, free elections shall take place in Rome for the first time since the Roman Republic of 1849. The question is, which party shall come out victorious? We've got Il Movimento Sociale Latino, Social Conservatism, or we've got uh, L'Alianza Cristiana Democratic, uh, Democratica, so the Christian Democratic Alliance. I'm honestly not sure. I don't really feel like it matters all that much. Yeah, there's a... Uh, there's some uh, Soviet stuff going on here. Uh, who should we actually go with? Because it's going to change our, um, our government, of course. We can go with either. Would be kind of cool with a wholesome social democracy in uh, in Rome. I hope none of these are actually dependent on either election result. Yeah, I'm gonna check the ministers. I think. Also, I gotta turn this down. You're loud. Do the cannons? Sounds like cannons in my ears. Let's see. Uh, so, social conservatives give political power gain. That's like. Eh. Uh, I mean, who cares, honestly? Social Democrats are probably even worse here, it seems like. This one is good. Theoretical Scientist. So is the Mixed Economy one, but the Social Conservatives are... That one is like, eh, okay. And that one is kind of shit. Because we need the military factories right now. 
Yeah, but Social Democrat isn't, like, communist, though. I mean, if you want to, like, meme it up, it is, but, like... Uh, let's see. Social Conservatives. Here are, I think, better... Oh, no, I'll say they're literally the same. So, I think... Honestly, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get, like, fucked in one way. Uh, by... Some of these, and we can probably just reassign them. It's gonna cost a little bit, but... I think I'll go, um... I'll go uh, Social Conservative, and then I'm going to uh, reassign a couple of them. I mean, uh, yes, I... I agree, Sock them. Uh, sock them best. Oh, it's, it doesn't have a, have a socialism in the name, actually. Social democracy literally is just social democracy. Um, it's democratic socialism, I think you're uh, you're thinking of, which is a different thing, but, you know, sounds very similar. Also, uh, Håkon in Norway is being uh, forced to abdicate. Uh, but yeah, like, in, um, in Norway, the largest party, IRL, like now, is this party. Arbeiderpartiet. Though it did change a lot, it, you know, it, it isn't radical socialist, which would be like Marxist-Leninist. Uh, nowadays, it's, um, it's uh, social democratic. This means like, I guess, the Nordic model, or like... The, what did it say? It said, uh, the re-foundation re of Rome. With the transition from the temporal power of the Pope. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Uh, good luck with the, uh, the vet and everything. And, uh, thank you for sticking around, Bobbit. I'll see you later, dude. Uh, with the transition from the temporal power of the Pope to democracy and civilian government complete, we can now declare the end of the Papal State and the birth of the Kingdom of Rome, with the Pope reigning akin to a constitutional monarch. I think after that event, fires are probably going to have to end. Um, what are they, IRL? Are they uh, Demsok, the, um, or the, uh, Arbeiterpartia? They are Social Democrat, IRL. Uh, so they would be... There you go, NSA that. Uh, yeah, they are Social Democrat IRL, I think, is what they would uh, describe themselves as. We have uh, no, I think, Democratic Socialist necessary parties, necessarily, uh, but um, also, I gotta say, though, like, uh, technically, Democratic Socialism, as it's talked about often in the United States, is very similar to Social Democracy in the Nordic countries, so... Maybe someone would make the argument that they're democratic socialism I, or social, socialist. I wouldn't. They're not necessarily arg or like moving towards a socialist economy or anything. They're just like they're mixed economy. They like government oversight, regulation, and all that, but also capitalism still. While a democratic socialist would probably want to uh, get rid of capitalism. We have some large parties as well that are anti-capitalist. Like, um, Socialist Left, which is, uh, predicted to get, like, 5% of the votes in, um, the local municipal elections, and you also got Red, which is, like, straight up a Marxist-Leninist, like, kind of roughly communist, but not actually, like, real communist, not communist in the sense that, you know, we had in the Cold War, but they're Marxist-Leninist, and they're also quite big. So, um... There's a bunch of, like, socialist-esque parties in Norway. Then again, like, compared to America... Oh, and also now we got Martin Tranmal. He was the leader of this party, uh, historically, at some point. I read a book on him for, uh... My... Uh, bachelor bachelor's uh, thesis uh, on media and stuff, because he founded a newspaper, which I used in... Uh, as a part of my thesis. So I was like examining how, you know, how neutral the newspapers were in the First World War. Of course, his newspaper wasn't neutral at all because it was obviously very anti-capitalist. So it was kind of hard to tell uh, if they had a bias towards either Britain or Germany or whatever, or France during the First World War. But um, uh, the, uh, 
like the um his you know his paper would just like i don't know they would kind of buy into like conspiracy theories about industrialists by uh, like running the world and stuff which one might say could have been um founded upon existent uh conspiracy theories before then about you know a certain people running industry and all that i don't know dude uh look there are plenty of problems in the u.s i wouldn't say that that is the largest one uh not to like get too political but like the democrats in the u.s they're turning farther left sure uh, at least the younger generation which is kind of to be expected but if you compare them to like other countries in the world uh, especially the nordic countries you know i'm from norway but um sweden and denmark as well and iceland in terms of like how far left the democrats are it's like not even close to any of these countries uh, they're still like very much part further right than uh, most um uh, most uh, other countries. I think I saw a study where they c compared uh, the party programs and stuff of various different parties of diff in the world and I think the Democrats were like they were right of every party that even like was close to uh, being self-professed as like left -e uh, left-esque. So like the Democrats are quite far on the right honestly in the in a global perspective. I would say at least. I mean, you can, you know, disagree that that's uh, that's fair, fair as well. I do not pretend to hold all the answers to everything. I think. Um, you know, not to, again, get too political and stuff, but, like, I think in terms of, like, larger problems that Americans need to focus on, and instead of, you know, uh, how, you know, your team is winning or losing or whatever in, in politics and all that, there's, there's some, uh, endemic problems in the U.S., like, uh, you know, wealth inequality and you know, general poverty and stuff that, like, gotta be addressed. Of course, they're not unique to the U.S., they're, they're everywhere. Oh. So it rained for a second there, that was really loud. How long is this gonna take? Because I wanna have the foundation of, or refoundation of Rome, and after that I'm gonna call it, I think. Uh, because I gotta, you know... I gotta go to bed at some point. It's only 11 here, but still... He still has been signed between the AUS and the PSA. That's not unheard of. The CSA is taking over, and this is just a, a, as was... Or as what it happened in both of my US campaigns, where the um, CSA became so dominant that the AUS and the PSA, you know, basically uh, declared a truce. The Soviets are losing, of course, and uh, not to be, uh, or not unexpected. Honestly, I've only seen the Soviets take over once during an actual civil war. It's very rare that it happens. I think it might have been in the, in the uh, Norway campaign that I saw the Soviets take over. Yeah, like, I, I went to bed very late last night, and a part of it I blame, or I, honestly, I, I can't, because, like, I I got home uh, in time, but, um, I think it's a Senate. Yeah, it's a Senate. Uh, but, yeah, I, um, I got home in time, uh, honestly, but it wasn't... Okay, that one is complicated. I'm going to say the thing I was going to say first. Uh, I got home in time. Which meant, like, I, I was home at, like, fucking 7 a.m. or something. Like, 8 a.m. But, um... I was trying to take the morning bus. But it just never arrived. So, luckily, a lady from... Because I was taking the, uh... The stop from the university. 
uh, here, and a lady uh, drove up with uh, and just like asked us, the guy, uh, the people who were like waiting at the bus stop. Obviously, Norwegians, Norwegian people don't speak to each other when they're waiting at, uh, for the bus. That's like you don't do that. You've probably seen the memes of like Swedish people standing like a mile away from each other at the bus stop. Uh, it's the same thing here in Norway. But anyways, she like just rolled down her window and she was like, "Is the bus not coming?" And we're like, "Nah, dude." So she uh, gave us a ride, and that was fucking awesome. And that's like, <laughs> that's something that doesn't usually happen in Norway. I think it only happens when it's, when it's a Sunday and everyone knows that everyone in that situation has been drinking too much and is now very tired and want to go home. So that was very nice. Luckily, she was not a uh, a uh, murderer who, you know, when I got in the car would have, you know, driven me off somewhere and killed me. Uh, but then again, that shit doesn't happen in Norway. Like, bad stuff rarely happens here. Uh, Jewish situation in Algeria. With the current anti-Semitic persecutions rising in national France, uh, the Pope decided to write the encyclical Humani Generis Unitas, which condemns anti-Semitism, racism, and the persecution of, the, of Jews. After reading that inspiring text, uh, a few Jewish emigrants decided to come to the Papal States. All Christendom welcomes the elder brothers in the faith, or... Oh yeah, because then the French are, like, quite anti-Semitic then, I guess. Settle only those who have relatives here, or we have enough problems of our own. I mean, it's free manpower, and that's not something we have a lot of. I'm gonna welcome the Jews. Uh, yeah, like, nothing bad happens in Norway, though. So, uh, so uh, I wasn't gonna stab her, and she wasn't gonna stab me. Uh, we basically were... Uh, you know, you know... That's not gonna happen, usually. Of course, I'm talking in complete hyperbole when I say nothing bad happens in Norway. Usually. It's like on a 50-year cycle. Like, every or every 50 or 60 years, something bad happens. I think, uh, I'd like to give some perspective in terms of, like, how many times police have had to, like, shoot their guns in Norway. I think we tried to have armed police and they fired their guns like three times over the course of the entire period when we tried it, which was like over a couple of years. And uh, one of those was a shot that they meant to fire and the other two were misfires. And like the, the one shot they fired was a uh, warning shot. Uh, the refoundation of Rome. Now that the uh, transitionary process of the Papal States to democratic rule is complete, we can say farewell to the old symbols and celebrate the rebirth of the Roman nation after over a millennium. Rome rises from the ashes. MSL becomes the ruling party. Public elections will not be held. And now we get a new flag. Rome. Well, that's interesting uh, in terms of like flag colors and stuff. Kind of boring, but it's uh, at least like not... A convoluted mess like a lot of the flags in the Kaiserreich. Hello, Cardinal Otter. Uh, you caught me just at the tail end of the stream. I'm uh, probably gonna be like calling it soon, but. Because it's late here. Uh, let's see here. Dealing with Black Monday. By the way, the uh, VOD here, if you didn't catch all of it, it's gonna be uploaded to YouTube, I think. So if you want to watch that, this or the um, section where I played uh, Three Kingdoms with Brad, which was fun, uh, you can do that later on if you need to. Uh, let's see, which one is better? I want to do the Roman army stuff just because I think this is funny as hell. Uh, organizing like the legions. Oh yeah, of course. I'm very glad that Sweden is not on a different time zone. Because that would be fucking stupid. It is stupid though that like, I think, uh, if you look at the map, of, of course this map is like very silly. Um, so Portugal is in the same time zone as Britain, I think. Uh, but this projection doesn't like in really show how like weird that actually looks. There's some other like strange, um, uh, strange like, Time zones and stuff, but... I mean, yeah, I... I just... 
it's amazing the legendary stuff it's funny if that's what what you're referring to uh duck i think we'll go with uh so both of these just give stability but they build um naval bases and stuff and like industries and shit which we desperately need and we also get the research slot which we also desperately need we need to get rid of black monday stuff though Trying to figure out, like, what would be the ideal time to stream, um, if I'm gonna start doing this more often. Uh, like, when people are able to watch and stuff, and, um, you know, peak hours for that. Because I wanna, like, stream when people can watch, and then do other stuff when people can't, like, record. Um. Yeah, there you go, uh, uh, order. The, yeah, Portugal. Uh, Great Britain and Ireland and then you got Spain right above here which is in a different uh, like oh, sorry yeah different time zone if uh, what you're saying that is correct which is all kinds of weird but then again when you look at a map that's not actually like what the world looks like obviously it's a it's a projection so and the projections are all kinds of fucked up This flag is so strange. I, uh, I'm guessing it's Cyrillic. I don't, like, I have no clue what it says. I'm guessing those are, like, are those ampersands? I don't know. It might just be, like, a symbol, but I'm guessing it's Cyrillic and says something. Like a shorthand or something. I'm just uh, not used to seeing this flag and not having the uh, hammer and sickle. Though they do get, um... Uh, they do get... Uh, like, uh, the Hammer and Sickle if they go Totalist under... Is it Beria? I'm not quite sure. Beria is in... Oh, there he is. Maybe it's not Beria. It's a, it's a different dude who's like... Uh, uh, a fucking, um... Uh, cruise ship, of course. Cruise ship. <clears throat> it looked like Iran's flag. Let's see. Obviously, th not this Iran. Uh, so, th the IRL Iran? Uh, that one has, um... Oh, it's the original Bolshevik Revolution flag. That makes sense. Uh, the Shiroki Socialisti take power in Bulgaria. Alright. So the Socialisti, they are not socialists. They are uh, something else, I think. Aren't they? They are... Oh no, they actually are social democrat. Cool. A lot of uh, uh, parties in Norway that also call themselves socialist something, can also be described as socialist, uh, or social democrat. Like, I believe socialist left is technically social democrat. Uh, counter-revolution in Chile. So now we've got nationalist Chile under uh, Bartolomé Guillermo Blanche Espejo. Got a cool, uh, uh, cool um, uniform there. This tank's- the tank looks, uh, positively American. Yeah, if- if you're talking about the, uh... Also, what? Mysore state, the... Uh, Travancore state, and the- and Madras, of course, we've seen Madras before. The princely federation here. Yep, you're absolutely correct. And you got, uh... Albania has joined the Donau Aryabund, the most blessed alliance. Uh, you've got a very, um, interesting, like, situation going on in, um, in, uh, S uh South America. Uh, in Kaiserreich nowadays, because, like, there's so much shit happening at all times, with so many, like, divergent ways of things uh, that things can go, and so many wars and stuff. Argentina and Paraguay just made peace. Oops, I just clicked off something else. Uh, rebellion in Yemen. 
So the Yemeni are rebelling against the Ottomans. Further balkanization of the Ottoman territories. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just get the improved infantry equipment, why not? Bashik declared war on the Ottoman Empire, yep, so the Ottomans are now collapsing. Got a Union of Burma here as well. Man, that guy's photo does not look like a photo. Or something went wrong with the colorization. It looks like an oil painting, honestly. This guy has the best glasses. And the best face. He, he, oh, he reminds me of um, the actor who plays um, uh, Julius Caesar in, uh, in HBO's Rome. Like an Asian version of him. Or like Chinese or uh, Uyghur or whatever the Ma clique are. They are the Muslim, I believe, Chinese um, faction. Also, the Shoah restoration has led to Hirohito abdicating in favor of his son, I think. I think Yasuhito is his son, I'm not quite sure. Combined syndicates of America declared war on Cuba. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's cool. I've never actually seen the combined syndicates of America, like, fight outside of their own borders during the Civil War. That's very cool. And yeah, Duck, that actually would be really cool to try to, like, um, get as close as possible to the real world. Like, to get that, um, uh, our finest hour kind of, uh, you know, alternate history thing that Winston Churchill wrote or whatever, like, because there is a, um, I don't remember if it's like Führerreich or whatever with Adam Dressler, but like something similar to that. Are you talking about, uh, oh yeah, dude, Martin Diaz uh, Tamayo, he has got a, he's got an amazing stash. He looks like, um, uh, it's, it's probably just because the picture is amazing, but he also looks like, uh, what's his face from, um, it looks like a John Travolta that didn't g sort of go insane, I guess. But instead joined the military. Yeah, above Travolta. Okay, we're dealing with Black Monday. Um... So we don't need that many naval dockyards. I don't know why the game insists on me just getting so many naval dockyards. What we need is military factories for the support uh, equipment. This will do the aid for the farmers. Black Monday said the farmers with, uh, of the primarily agricultural Lazio hard due to a lack of sales from exports, and some farmers have even fallen into bankruptcy and forced and been forced, it should say, to sell their farms. If we're able to help. Uh, both our people and economy, we must begin to aid our farmers and save them from bankruptcy uh, through subsidies and limiting production of agricultural products to create demand. I think this was probably not created by a native English speaker, but so are most of the uh, descriptions in this uh, this mod. Uh, my plan with the Vatican. So I'm currently... Um, I'm currently doing... Also, that is a very good point, Duck. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh... I, my, my current plan is to do, um, uh, like, the, uh, I think trying to, like, restore the Roman Kingdom or, like, the Roman Republic. Try to at least uh, get the northern parts of the country sort of under our control. At least, you know, I want to fight the Syndicalists, I think, on the side of, I think, the Entente. Because that's probably what Two Sicilies is going to join. And... Uh, I want to, of course, go down the democratic Vatican uh, path here with the uh, Senate of the Kingdom of Rome. 
And I want to build the Roman legions with this shit. Because it's funny. Oh yeah, dude, it's going to be hard as hell. I don't actually foresee myself uh, being able to do any of it. And I'm not, as usual, going to like exploit or try for any sort of like very... Uh, very like cheesy strategies. I'm just going to try to play the game and see what happens. I think, though, if we just do or like make the right choices, we should get enough troops to e at least hold the line against the syndicalists. I mean, we've got forts and stuff. I don't know how good the forts are. Can I please click there? Uh, they're quite good. Four. And that one is bad. We can build this one up as well. So we can at least hold them, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. If uh, possible, we would... I mean, we would greedily steal any territory we could for the factories. But then again, also, do we... Uh, let's see. How do you see, like, cores and shit? What's the map mode for that? Obviously not supply, though. But, um... Okay, foreign claims. We don't have any foreign claims, apparently. But we do have foreign claims on this stuff. Because we want to we take this stuff so we get the um, uh, the manpower and stuff, as well as the factories. Because you'll get a lot of manpower from uh, places you have uh, cores on. It's the reason why in the um, CSA playthrough, when we start taking more uh, territory, or just in any part of the American... Um, uh, Civil War. Uh, you just like fall out of control, and yeah, these guys are all in the Entente. That is the problem. The uh, problem there, <clears throat> but we can potentially hope that, like, so let's say if uh, the Two Sicilies doesn't join the Reichs Pact, but instead of somehow ends up in um... uh oh, they're not that far away from declaring war. If they want to, but if the rice pacts, or sorry, if the social, uh, oh, why can I say, it? can I not say it? Uh, two Sicily so somehow ends up in the rice pact, which I don't even know if it's possible. Then we could do it. Yeah, there you go. Side with he uh, Hegemon. The fa uh, fall of Petrograd, Soviet Russia was annexed. So that's over now. What happens here then? They've still got the uh, Senate. Gotta wait until all the, uh, I guess, problems, internal problems are done. And then they'll get, um, get that ball rolling. This is a Turkish song, I believe. Sounds very Turkish, at least. It could be. That's an interesting flag there as well. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> what the fuck? So, uh, sick dog no more. The Ottoman Empire has uh, conquered all of the estates and puppeted them. Uh, I did not expect that to happen because the uh, you know, uh, the Persians were kind of like pushing in uh, a bit here. I was expecting the um, Ottomans to kind of get pulled apart. But yeah, now we got a big ass fucking strong Ottoman Empire here. Who they can actually, so they can end up in a war with Russia at least. Uh, if Russian, if the Russians take this territory up here. That's the thing I'm banking on in the Norway playthrough, at least one of the many things I'm banking on, the Ottoman Empire kind of joining in against the Soviet Union, because the Soviet Union in my uh, Norway playthrough is basically fucking bankrolling the entirety of the war. 
<laughs> yeah, I was about to suggest Triple Litania, but holy shit, yep. So, uh, we're not gonna fuck with the Ottomans. Anything, like, east of... Like... I, dude, honestly, <clears throat> we, we're only concerned with the Christians. The Muslims can do whatever they want. As long as it's not red. As long as it's not syndicalist. Despite the fact that, you know, we do have literal designs, which I did not design these, but we do have literal designs in the game here called the Deus Volt class. Like, the Deus Volt class submarine. There's some, like, there's some meme shit in this, um... in this, uh, nation. Though, honestly, it's not, you know, it's not too far-fetched, but I do think they did lean into the, the meme. I think it's a bit on the nose to call it the Deus Volt class. That's an uh, interesting uh, perspective there, friend. Don't know if I've seen that South Park episode, though there's a lot of South Park episodes. I used to be really into it when I was like, I mean, a bit younger, uh, and I had time to actually watch all of it because they do they churn out those episodes like mad, considering you know they make them like week by week. Uh, but nowadays, I probably don't have enough time to watch all that stuff. And also, I've heard that some of their takes later on have been kind of like weird and not as funny. Like when they do like political content, it hasn't been like it, they they haven't like managed to like hit that perfect like line of like satire and offensive like they did before, and kind of uh, some of the jokes fell flat because of that. But again, that's just people's opinions. So yeah, I think so. I'm <clears throat> I'm probably just gonna be like mainly passive for now. I'm gonna remove this so I don't click on it again and again and again. I'm mainly gonna be a bit passive now until I get some industries so that I can actually, you know, get the um, support equipment at least. We want to get a stockpile of the stuff we need to reinforce our meager army here, our palace god. And then, um, I mean, yeah, uh, most of South Park though has been about politics forever, I think. Like, South Park is like, I think they've, they've never really like tried to like shy away from politics, honestly. But, um, and that's, I think, w uh, what made it great, because the, uh, like, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, or Matt, Trey, yeah, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, uh, they've been, like, very good at the whole satire business, but, I don't know, there's some, like, there's some stuff going on in the world that is kind of complicated that they didn't grow up with, so I think that might be why some people are now finding it, like, they're, you know, they're not, like, hitting the mark as hard as they were before, because, like, the world's changed, and, uh, while their comedy, I think, is constantly evolving, um, there might be some stuff that, like, they're talking about that they might not fully understand. Though, again, I haven't seen it, so I make no judgments. I'm just, uh, just going off of what I heard. I would still watch it, though, even though some people have told me it's not as good. If I had the time, that is. Also, this Transylvanian flag, I love it. It's so weird. It's got like the, you know, it's it's got some like German vibes to it, like the um, Weimar flag or whatever, the uh, modern German flag. But then they've got the blue there, which is strange. Oh wait, wh what the fuck? 
Oh, I've never seen this before. Fucking everybody sent it in this game. That is a strange flag. So it's got... It's it's similar to the Norway flag, which I... Dude, I think... What the fuck? Elias Volan? Um, it's similar to the Norway flag that... Uh, in that it's got this like strange horizon thing. Guess, uh, you know, it's just a blue line because Finland is literally flat as hell. I don't know, dude. Um... It's flat as hell and it's got lakes, therefore blue. I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, the the flag in this like direction here was added in the most recent patch, 0.9, I think. Um, which is uh, what I started my Norway and Finland playthrough on. But yeah, that's because uh, they've got Lapua and stuff, but they they went socialist victory. I do like this symbol though. This is cool. Now their name is a work, uh, or sorry, a yeah, a mouthful. Oh, dude, we gotta go with this fucking doofus with the hat or the helmet. Uh, specifically because of the recruitable population, which is insanely important for a small nation like ours. Uh, the real life flag of the Finnish Socialist Workers Republic uh, is just a massive red flag in 1918. Yeah, that's uh, that's part of the course for a lot of those movements. I mean, it's hard to like get together and agree on a flag for your nation when your nation isn't born yet and you're undergoing a revolution or you're trying to enact a revolution. You know, like um, that kind of flag, like the red there is usually just like an impromptu like revolutionary movement flag. And then the idea is you're going to settle on the flag later on, except they end up often liking the red, uh, the, the simple red, because that's, you know, that's the revolution, uh, or that's the flag of the revolution. It becomes like part of the national uh, identity. Yeah, exactly. T TBD. It's like with China and uh, the Soviet Union having just very red flags. They're, um, like, the constituent uh, Soviet republics in the Soviet Union had some more uh, interesting flags, but they still carried that general theme of just a big sea of red. Anyways, I uh, think we're probably going to have to call the stream here because I've been streaming for like 4 hours and 15 minutes and I was only planning to go like 3 hours uh, or 3 and a half hours, honestly. Uh, but, you know, Kaiserreich is that kind of... or Hearthstone 4, but Kaiserreich especially is the kind of game where I just cannot stop playing. Uh, so I gotta stop myself now because I'm getting kind of tired and I can feel the voice um, struggling a little bit to, uh, to keep up with all the vo uh, words I want to to uh, vomit out into the internet. So I'm gonna save the game and... Oh, not the console. Not cheat doggy. Uh, I'm gonna save the game and I'm gonna try to get this uploaded to YouTube. I'm not gonna... Uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Some stuff might be muted in the vault. I'm not quite sure how that works with Twitch, but I'll try to do my best to get uh, this out on Twitch for... Or, or on YouTube for those who, you know, don't watch on Twitch. And also... Uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Indeed, I'll yeah, I'll see you guys uh, later. I like think uh, streaming is a lot of fun, so I think I want to do this more often and uh, do more like live content and stuff. And also, I kind of want to do uh, stuff where we stream and play multiple people together. That would be, it would be kind of cool. Uh, but that's you know in the distant future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Good night, uh, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.